you got dads. And I guess now we have to date Hugo. Um, and then we'll have been through one date with all the dads. And after that, I'm going to pick three. I already have two in mind, but let's see what happens here. Hugo, let's see what you got. I just almost fought your kid in an alleyway, so I'm sure we'll get along fine. I navigate to Hugo's dad book page and type out a message. Hey Hugo, great seeing you at the barbecue. Wanna hang out sometime? You know, what would be really cool is if I had a wicked hangover this entire day. <laughs> and I had to like, play minigames to avoid barfing or look like I'm not having a huge headache. That should be a game. Pretend you don't have a hangover. I wait for a few minutes before the computer dings. I'm glad you messaged me and I definitely want to hang out sometime, but I have a favor to ask. Our class is going on a field trip to the aquarium today and one of our chaperones called in sick. Is there any possible way you could come by and replace them? Uh-oh. I think about it for a moment. That's a lot of screaming kids that I'd be accountable for. And they're in middle school. Arguably the worst age to be. Amanda silently trudges into the kitchen and pours herself a bowl of cereal. Morning, Amanda. Morning, pops. Hey, how was middle school for you? Bad, but nobody likes middle school. It's three years of bad acne, crying, and being generally terrible. Aww. Everyone sucks, no self-awareness. It's just a bunch of hormonal teenagers locked in a gross old building for 40 plus hours a week, doing long division and starting fights over... I don't know, pizza day? Top 40s, pop? Middle schoolers should be avoided at all mm -hmm. costs. What was your middle school experience like? I didn't like it. <laughs> Who the fuck is Stugs? What did she do to you? I stare off into the distance, remembering the 24 hours that we dated and the three times we held hands between class periods. Then I remember the bit of betrayal, her leaving me for Arnold Birmingham. Him making me eat dirt in front of her. I don't want to talk about it. Oh. See? Middle schoolers are reprehensible. Wait, why are you asking me about middle school? Oh, Mr. Vega requested me to help chaperone his middle school class to the aquarium. I just wanted to know what I was in for. Mm. You get to go to the aquarium? Are you kidding me? The last field trip I got was to the clam chowder factory. They didn't even give us clam chowder. They gave us square pizza at a clam chowder factory. Oh, is that why you won't eat clam chowder anymore? No, it's because Bobby Willingham threw up into one of the vats of clam chowder, and I'm the only one who saw it happen. It haunts me. Right, let's leave that story firmly in the past. Anyways, you just do it. Mr. Vega sounds like you could really use the help. Plus, you get to hang out with cool fish. See, that sounds like my fucking nightmare. I'm, um... I think I've mentioned this, this in other streams, but I'm actually terrified of a lot of ocean creatures. I can handle them as a cartoon in this game, but... A lot of them really freak me out, so let's see how this goes. I, can't, I get kind of weird about cramps. The ocean makes me nervous. What, are you worried that a whale is gonna pop out of the touch tank and swallow you whole? Don't you put fear in my heart. Well, do they have penguins there? Yes, they have penguins there. Then it's settled. Penguins outweighed fear of ocean. Good point. I sit back down on the computer and let Hugo know that I'm available. He tells me to meet him at the aquarium and gives me the address. I grab my keys and kiss Amanda on the forehead before I head out. I arrive at the aquarium to find that the school buses have beaten me there. Pre-teens huddle around their teachers in small groups, yelling at each other and goofing off. Every teacher looks like they're at their wit's end. <sighs> Hugo jucks up to me, looking frazzled. I'm so glad you're here. Hugo! <sighs> it's been a debacle all morning. We're shorthanded and most of the kids won't stop screaming, and I'm sure you know it's the case with all middle schoolers. I live through Amanda at 12. I'm all too mm. familiar. Great. Well, it's you and me chaperoning a group of 10 kids. They're over there. Hugo walks me over to a gaggle of preteens who are sitting on the ground playing with their phones. They're not kicking each other like some of the other groups, so we're off to a good start. Oh... Can you guys put your phones away? All of the kids look up for a moment to stare at Hugo. They then go back to texting. At least they're quiet. Um. Too quiet. These guys are up to something. I can feel it. There's no way. They're too busy thinking about not getting food stuck in their braces to pull any stunts. It's, it's middle school after oh. all. Yeah, we'll see. The classes start filling into the aquarium and Hugo hands out massive staple packets of paper to each kid. These are due at the end of the field trip. Yes, this will be for a grade. No, you can't borrow a pencil. The kids collectively groan and grab the sheets from Hugo. What's in the packet? Hey. Honestly, it's just busy work so that the teachers can have a moment's reprieve. 
I think one of the questions asked them to sit quietly for 10 minutes to think about the Great Barrier Reef. <laughs> teacher hacks, I like that. Yeah, my mom is a teacher, I've heard the stories. Stuff like this happens. Wait, I thought you were an English teacher. What does the aquarium have to do with books? Oh. We just did a unit on the old man in the sea. Nothing quite like introducing kids to the futile perseverance of the human spirit by making them pet stingrays. Yeah, then we can all think about the time Steve Irwin died. That was fun. Oh. It gives us time to check out some of the exhibits as well. Come on, they have a phenomenal selection of tropical fish. Oh boy, here we go. While the kids sit on the fr floor and pretend to do their assignments while they text, Hugo and I wander over to a large tank filled with brightly colored fish. Hugo points to a brown and white fish with long spines. Also, hi to this next viewer. I, um... <laughs> I kind of decided to stream very, uh, what's it, spontaneously, so that's why you didn't know, I'm sorry. Um, Hugo points to a brown and white fish with long spines. Oh no, is, th is this the one I think it is? Mm. A lionfish. Oh, it's, it's not the one I thought it was, good. That right there is a lionfish. Did you know that their stomachs can expand up to 30 times in size? Mm. Whoa. They're spi- Shit. Those are called scorpion fish. Uh... To me, I believe. Or maybe I'm remembering it wrong. I just know I saw these in an aquarium in Egypt when I was 12 and they freaked me out. Nature is hardcore. You think that's bad? Take Fucking hell, Hugo! Stop! Hugo points to a spiny, crumpy-looking fish hanging out near the bottom oh. of the tank. There's a stonefish, the most venomous fish in the world. And they just, like, keep it here? Oh, they're relatively harmless, as long as you don't step on them. What happens if you step on them? Mm -hmm. Tissue necrosis. Cool. Ah. Nature is wild. Hugo seems to know a lot about fish. I feel the overwhelming need to impress him. Hey, see that fish over there? Um. That one? Yeah, that's the... American longfish. Will he appreciate a joke? Humphead Rassy. I wouldn't be surprised if that's actually the name of a fish. Well, my standard so far when I don't know what to do is to just tell the joke. Oh. So here we go. <laughs> he likes it. Did you know that... Political fish tri Paranormal fish trivia. Here we go. This fish sleeps upside down, but contrary to popular belief, it's not an actual vampire. That's the vampire oh. fish. Wait, are you serious? Shit, am I serious? Uh, I'm gonna keep the joke going. We're talking fish here. There's no time for jokes. Ah, oh. oh, crap. I thought he would appreciate the joke. Ah, oh, that's a clownfish. Right. We need the kids to another room. Sharks, sea turtles, eels, and other marine life swim around in a massive Florida ceiling aquarium. Well, that I could handle. The kids begin trying to take selfies with the sharks. Shuko leaves my side to separate two kids who started fighting over a, cap a Capri Sun. <laughs> really? I walk around the room reading the tiny little blurbs about different fish swimming inside the enclosure. After a while, I look around and see Hugo again. He's gazing up the aquarium in childlike wonder. The ripples in the water cast blue moving shadows across his face. For someone surrounded by angry hormonal preteens, he looks completely peaceful. He looks really cute in this light. I hope he doesn't notice me staring. Wow. Hey. I walk over to join him. Beautiful, isn't it? Yes, and terrifying and gross and weird and full of fish that I don't like and ah, oh, jeez. We can... <laughs> Are those two sharks kissing? <laughs> That's a good question. Fuck it, we're trying this. No, Barry. The one's eating the other. Well... I th again, I'm trying to like joke a little or maybe appeal to his knowledge and I'm fucking up. This date is going horribly. We stand together for a moment admiring the wonders of marine life. We eventually make our way to the touch tank room, which seems to be the only thing the kids are actually interested in. The tank is filled with a variety of horseshoe crabs, sea urchins, stingrays and small fish. I stand around the edges of the tank and keep a wary distance from the sea life. Who knows what kind of nefarious plans those horseshoe crabs have for my well-moisturized hands. Shuko rolls up his sleeve and sticks his hand in the water. 
do want to pet some raspberry. Oh, I, I think I'm good. I don't really... I think you should just stay over here and admire them from a respectable distance. Come on, it'll be fun. And informative. Don't make fun of me, but I'm scared to touch them. I get weird when there's no glass separating us. I don't know what any of those things are, but I get the feeling they will probably bite me and my delicious hands if given the chance. Nothing in this tank can hurt you. The stingrays have had their bobs removed, the horseshoes crabs only leave, eat little clams, and the anemones are perfectly safe to touch. Oh my god. Against my better judgment, I approach the tank, slowly dipping my hand into the cold water. I touch a stingray as it glides past me. I did, um, when I went to San Francisco a couple years ago, I did visit the aquarium there, because for all my bitching about fish that freak me out, I actually do kind of like certain parts of aquariums. And they did have, like, one of those uh, shake hands with the otters cages, and that was really fun. I like that. See? Not so bad. It feels like fun, slimy leather. Things get a lot less scary when you learn more about them, right? Yeah, no, no, most fish still freak me the fuck out. I dive my hand back into the touch tank with renewed vigor for ocean life. I poke at some urchins and feel the hot carapace of a horseshoe crab. My hand brushes against Hugo's as we reach for the same anemone. I pull away blushing. Oh, we're doing Lady and the Tramp now. Hugo smiles at me. Hey, you're supposed to be touching the fish. Sorry, I just get a little carried away some. Wait. That girl over there looks suspicious. Oh. Why is that? Are backpacks usually that wet? Hold on. Susan! Susan, get back here! Hugo runs after middle school and catches her before she can make it to the exit. Wanna tell me what's in the bag? Textbooks? Wanna tell me what's really in the bag? Susan won't budge. I walk over to Hugo and the girl. I think he might need a bad cup. Look, kid. That's an easy 5 to 10 in the clink? Let's keep it cool. Whatever it is, it goes back into the touch tank. Now. You're not a teacher. You can't tell me what to do. Yes, well, I am. Can you please put the bag down? Next time, we won't say please. Susan glares at Hugo for a moment before dropping her book back on the floor. It lands with a wet slap. We stare at it for a moment before it starts to move. Hugo leans down and unsips the backpack. A horseshoe crab frantically scuffle, scuttles out and across the floor. An employee swoops in, scoops it up, and places it back in the tank. She gives us a disapproving look. Jesus, Susan, what was your plan? I was trying to free him. To where? Outside where he was gonna die? Susan, go back in your group. We'll discuss this later. Yeah, enhance where we can see him. Susan sucks off, leaving me alone with Hugo. He gives me a pat on the shoulder. Middle schoolers have sticky hands. I doubt that's the first time that's happened here. Or the last. In the next room, we see a variety of smaller tanks. Sea urchins, tiny fish, and a rainbow of beautiful underwater plant life surround us. Ah. Look over here. Hugo points to some seahorses gathered at the bottom of a tank. One of them is in the middle of giving birth. Do I have to watch that? I don't wanna. Oh. That's actually the male seahorse. Sort of takes fatherhood to a new level, doesn't it? Hey kids, come check this out! There's a male seahorse giving birth! A low murmur from the students. They just jump back to oh. their phones. Fun fact, male seahorses can even give birth and then get pregnant in the same day. Man, we thought we had hey. it hard. Wonder if have they have to deal with their kids' awkward teenage years too. All however many thousand of them. You seem to know a lot about marine life, Hugo. Oh. It's not really my specialty, but I do make a point to learn as much as possible whenever I can. I think that learning shouldn't end when you leave school. We should challenge ourselves to find out more about the things we don't understand every day of our lives. Because if you stop learning, I don't think you'll ever be able to grow or change as a person. Good point. But I still don't trust the ocean. We'll get there. We finally make our way over to my favorite part of the tour. The Arctic exhibit. Yay! This is cool! Do we get to see the penguins? Mm. Yes, we get to see the penguins. Hell yes. Penguins and polar bears. Polar bears are cool. Our group of kids run around the exhibits. They won't stop tapping on the glass of the puffin enclosure, trying to get their attention. For at least a few moments, teachers, chaperones, and students alike seem to be having a great time. What was I so worried about? This isn't too bad. What? Hugo suddenly grabs my arm. Oh my god, there's a student in the penguin enclosure. <laughs> How the fuck did that happen? 
Wait, just kidding, it's very bad. Is it one of ours? It most certainly is. Molly Henderson, Susan's friend. I look over to the penguin and see a determined looking kid crouching behind a rock. She's hiding just out of sight of one of the employees. Over on the side of the enclosure, I see the door to the exhibit ajar. Was it unlocked this whole time? We gotta stop her before the staff sees and bans our school for life. Hugo looks mm. around. I'll create a distraction. Hugo runs toward the puffin exhibit and addresses the oh entire no. room. Everybody, 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 I have an announcement. The whole room turns towards oh Hugo. No. Oh. Um, here's a few facts I bet you didn't know about penguins. Everybody just stares at Hugo confused. Well, this is my shot. I run into the enclosure and I'm greeted by a cold blast of air. Psst, hey! The girl whips around to look at me. Her nose is pink from the cold. You can't be in here. Neither can you. I try to walk over to the girl, but the ground is so icy that I just end up slipping. I catch myself before I hit the ground, but the girl still uh. laughs at me. Uh, contrary to popular belief, penguins are birds. Birds are traditionally known to fly, but penguins cannot. So I can understand some confusion when we're discussing the birdness of penguins. The crowd is still somehow enraptured. Kid, what are you even doing? I'm letting the penguins go. They deserve freedom. Where are they even going to go? Are we doing this again? They're gonna live in my closet. Look, I just don't even have the time to argue about this. We gotta get out of here. Not until I save a penguin. Mm. Little known fact is that penguins only live in cold climates. Uh, w w with some exceptions. They they don't all live in cold climates if, if, if you're spilling hairs here. Did I mention that they don't fly? The crowd is starting to lose interest. I'm running out of time. Bribe her. Try to relate. Lay down the law. Trying to relate to middle schoolers always ends in tears on both sides. I'm gonna have to just pull authority. It worked before, right? Is it weird for me to raise my voice at a stranger's kid? Like, is it a parenting faux pas or something? Oh, fucking boss! I will give you $20 right now if you leave with me. Molly thinks for a second. Okay, well, give it to me right now. I reach into my pocket and pull out everything I have, examining each bill. Okay, well, I have $12 and some change, and there's a button here. Is that enough? <laughs> this kid... This, this is... This is starting to make me reconsider my stance on punishment. Christ. We move to shake on our agreement before I suddenly realize there's a wave of penguins on the way out of the enclosure. We're gonna have to block these birds. Wow, that was something. Block that oh god, what now? Nope. <laughs> Am I literally pushing penguins? Are you fucking serious? <laughs> what the f- This is ridiculous. Oh god. Stay back. Back, I say! Back, foul beast! No, 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 no! No, you don't! No, you don't! No, no! No, bad penguins! Bad penguins! I'm just gonna spam them with fucking hands. This is ape shit. What am I doing? Ah! No, a penguin escaped! No! No, stay back! Bribe that team! Take the money, you bitch! You whore! Oh my god! Mission complete! How many escaped? Oh, well, one penguin escaped. Shit! I just called a middle schooler a whore! Oh my god, I just called a middle schooler a whore! I was young and desperate that I needed the... Fuck. <laughs> Whew, glad that's over. Just in time too. Looks like Hugo is wrapping up his div <laughs> diversionary penguin speed. Ah. And that's why I think that penguins are one of the best animals in the world. I just called a middle schooler a whore. Oh, I'm going to hell.
Oh god. A few people in the audience clap out of a sense of duty. Everybody starts dispersing. Hugo spots us from across the way. Is nobody gonna address the escaped penguin? Eh. Molly, what were you doing in there? I was liberating animals, Mr. Vega. You realize that the penguins can only survive in Arctic temperatures, right? You would have had a dead penguin on your hands. There's a dead penguin running around soon to be dead penguin right now. Somebody catch it. It was the thought that counts. No, Molly, it wasn't. Molly turns to me. You owe me eight dollars. What? Just, I'll pay you later, kid. Molly runs off towards Susan. I suppose that they, that they can compare animal thief notes. Hmm. You're not off the hook, Molly. Oh. Barry, did you just bribe a child? I bribed the child. I'm just gonna have to admit it. It was the only way to get her out of the exhibit. I'm not proud of what I've done. I'm not proud of it either. Or of my penguin facts lecture. Oh, my penguin facts lecture. But at least we got her out. Okay, I, I guess he appreciates me trying. Let's just get through the day and get out of here. With the day finally coming to a close, the whole field trip is ushered through the gift shop and we make our way back to the school buses. As we leave the aquarium and the kids load onto the buses, Hugo pulls me oh. aside. Hey, Barry, thank you so much for helping out today. You're a lifesaver. It was no problem. It was actually kind of fun. Hey. Except for the escaped penguin. Is that just a penguin corpse somewhere in the corner of the aquarium that's got to be discovered tomorrow by some poor unfortunate employee? I bet it's his favorite penguin too. I bet it's the one he named Larry and like had a deep connection with. And he's going to be like, no, not Larry. Let me take you out next time to make it up to you. Like cheese boards? I love cheese boards. I'm all about cheese boards. There's nothing on earth more satisfying than a good cheese board. Oh shit, you're right. I forgot I had these on. Huh. I'm all about cheese boards. Great. Well, I gotta make sure the kids don't steal anything else. See you around. I walk inside to find the house empty. Hmm. I wonder where the panda's at. Before I know it, Amanda pops in through the door. What you up to tonight? Just doing some homework. How's the aquarium? It was an adventure. Some kid tried to steal a penguin. Uh. We've all been there. I had to run in and grab her before any of the employees uh. saw. And also, I killed a penguin. You got into the penguin enclosure? Did you steal a penguin for us? No, I let one run free to die. Horribly. Amanda, no penguins were stolen thanks to the valiant efforts of myself and Mr. Vega. It was nice getting to spend some time with Hugo, though. I'm surprised he helped complete a cover, uh, covert up. He's usually kind of a... Uh, kind of a what? Uh. Kind of a stick in the mud. He's actually pretty cool. I had a good time with him. Alright, too much adventure for me today. I'm gonna go rest my eyes. You mean take a nap? There's a difference. You'll learn when you become a father. Well then. This was a fucking disaster. Grill Dad? What does that have to do with anything? Oh, it was actually an A. Okay, cool. I, I thought this was terrible. 